Thanks. And just to move the conversation forward, I thought we could delve a bit deeper into automated solutions, AI, and what, what benefits that's bringing to the market. Maybe, maybe to start, we could look at where we've really seen it add, add efficiency and add value to the products that you, you offer. I don't know who wants to take that. Well, I think that uh, you have mentioned already earlier the, uh, uh, the use of, uh, of AI to, um, to address some of the, uh, uh, the area where you have uh, lots of uh, manual intervention, like unformatted message. Uh, so for sure, uh, this has been a dramatic uh, improvement, uh, leveraging on AI to, uh, to process those unstructured messages in an automated, uh, in an automated ma uh, manner. So this has been, and this is something that uh, already surfaced, I would say, a few years ago. It's not uh, recent, so it's not. We have not uh, waited the new, uh, the new flavor of the uh, uh, of the AI uh, uh, techniques to be able to leverage on those uh, on those models. I think that what is even more important than AI itself is also the, mach the machine learning uh, behind yeah. uh, the, the the underlying algorithm that you need to train. And here again, uh, we are back to the um, to the um, to the people dimension. Uh, it's hyper important for, for, from our perspective uh, that everything around uh, machine learning needs to be fully supervised, supervised by, by people who understand exactly what they are doing. Yeah. And you could argue that this is not an area in a, in a traditional uh, financial uh, uh, institutions where uh, you need to, to, to put a lot of, uh, of focus, right? Uh, but the potential is uh, the potential is huge. Mm, uh, it's not a single day without a new use case that materializes in any uh, type of industry. Um, we have now also uh, cases that um, arise in the pure IT uh, organization. So, for example, we 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 are currently investigating uh, how to leverage on uh, artificial intelligence to help us to build uh, automated regression tests for some of the code that we are uh, uh, developing. And this is, a, this is a game changer when it comes to time to market. Mm -hmm. So not only in the, on the business product, but also on the pure IT engineering side, the potential is huge. Yeah. But I think there is also a point uh, that has been said uh, several times. Um, we need also to put in place the right level of governance. Uh, we are operating a regulated business, whether we like it or not. That's a reality. It will not disappear. It will not disappear with the digitization and the, uh, the machine learning and the artificial and the intelligence. So we need to accommodate that. So our capacity to pull in place uh, uh, the right governance model is a key success factor from my perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So AI for us is in three different parts, right? So for is the client's onboarding piece, can we do some AI around that to speed up the onboarding process, which sometimes can be quite clunky? Yeah. The second piece is in the core processing, right? So we have instruction coming out all the way down to the settlements late and vice versa. So unstructured instruction, I just mentioned, we, we do quite some AI on that. And then we have the entire RPA that is through the processing flow. And what we're trying to do now is also to build AI on exceptional workflow management and exploring whether we can leverage that to change our target operating model itself uh, to create skills, right? So that's what we're looking at right now. And the last piece for AI is really back up to the clients itself, right? Um, what tools can we use? What AI can we use to automate the communication flow between us and the clients? Do we use bots so that you can get instantaneous re response? So that is that piece itself. And I do think that if we do get all these things right, right, including the governance piece, the control piece, then I do think that there's a lot of potential from the AI perspective to really help to optimize workflow and even increase revenue, right? So that's where we are looking at. Yeah. Right? And Richard, um, I, I suppose one, one concern for, for people around AI is the kind of dehumanization of the service offering. I know from when I've done some work on the surveys, a lot of the comments are often name checking people who work at the business and rather than so it'd be good to get your kind of view on how you think this move to more technological systems could impact uh, client views. Um, that's a good question. Client service and relationship management still remain near the very top. So the, those are probably the top two service categories that people appreciate the most regardless of any of 
to change. The name checking that you spoke about is something relatively new. So we've noticed over the past couple of years, clients identifying individuals at their provider who they think are really easy to work with or who go above and beyond um, normal services. So far, we haven't seen any impact of this kind of dehumanization, as you put it, mm -hmm. on um, client service and relationship management appreciation. Interestingly, what Ying said about um, onboarding, that is something that pretty often people complain about yeah. in, in all sorts of respects. So if you can use AI to improve onboarding, I think that'll get a very positive response. Um, the only other thing I want to say, come back on, is the question of regulation. Generally, we assume that the industry feels regulation is a burden. But one thing that I hadn't realized that came up in two discussions yesterday, one on ISO 20022 and one on unique transaction identifiers, which we could put under the umbrella of new initiatives that could improve things. Most of the audience actually was in favor of these things being mandated simply because if the regulator says you have to do it, you can get the funds internally to, to get it yes. done. It's a smart yes. way of thinking, but yes, it's true. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very true, yes. Perfect. And I know, as Yannick, you mentioned the thing with the AI is it's probably developing faster than any other technology that we're looking at. So how, as an organization, are you prioritizing the investments and how are you managing to keep on top of that? And where, yeah, so where, where would most of your investments be going to keep on top of AI? So what, what we try to do also in our organization is that we try to avoid overreacting to a technology trend, right? We, we always take the time to, uh, to assess really the potential, but also the relevance for, uh, for our business and where we could really have uh, immediate uh, benefits. So this is really a mature process that we have. So we try to stay away from the, uh, the, the buzz uh, around uh, uh, those uh, new uh, emerging technology. But the, the reality, what, what is fascinating with AI, with the um, uh, chat GPT uh, explosion over the last uh, months, um, is the pace at which it reached the, uh, uh, I would say, the retail market, the individuals, right? Uh, which is fantastic. I mean, everybody has probably tried to use uh, chat GPT. But now when you look from an institution perspective, uh, there, is a, there, there is a different angle, right? So you are not... Um, uh, really trying to solve the same the same type of uh, of, uh, of issue. You must be very very cautious uh, because you you have a, a client a commercial relationship with uh, with people. Uh, it's not like uh, you want to to prepare a, a, a briefing for an important meeting and you ask ChatGPT to help you to do that. Uh, that's that's something. So we need really to assess the relevance of the case. So we, we have, and this is one of the things that we do in our organization, we really want to be very selective in the opportunity and make sure that we have really a problem that we are trying to solve with the utilization of uh, AI. And we just don't want to say, of course, we do AI because we have to do AI, right? Yeah. So uh, we need to find a purpose for um, uh, building AI. And we are exploring, as I say, across uh, the, the, the business uh, areas, but also within the IT uh, organization. And it is not just about AI, because you say something about uh, regulation. Uh, sometimes we are forced by regulations to a uh, direction that we don't necessarily want to go. Um, if I take an example, we know that uh, with the situation in, uh, with the, the, the war in, uh, in, uh, in Ukraine, for example, um, the, uh, the monitoring of sanctions that are forced by uh, the regulator is becoming extremely uh, difficult to manage because the number of sanctions and the area that you need to cover. So we have taken that, I would say, not an opportunity, but that, uh, that statement to uh, onboard new technology uh, to build basically an, automation, an automated uh, sanction monitoring process, uh, leveraging on new technology, including uh, some of uh, machine learning and AI capability that we could, uh, that we could have. Mm -hmm.